All right, hello and welcome everyone to another deck profile. Today we are sh we are showing off ninjas. Uh, ninjas has always been a deck that I have wanted to play ever since I just kept pulling Ultimate Rare Hanzas from Order of Chaos uh, ten years ago. I can't believe how long ago that set came out. Uh, so and back then it was still missing quite a few cards and uh, that could even remotely make it playable. I know, you know, there's some minor hype around White Dragon Ninja and the Ninjutsu art cards, but they really didn't make a splash on the scene. Like a lot of the cards that Darkwing Blast introduced, um, in Darkwing Blast we got a good number of support cards that kind of made the deck mesh really well and even managed to make the flip effect and face down effects or face down requirements for a lot of the Ninja cards actually come to fruition and work pretty well. And a lot of those cards have finally been released in Master Duel, and not in a secret pack. They actually had the wherewithal to put this in its own structure deck, which is fine by me. I've been saving gems for a little bit to prepare for uh, the next packs that come out here in about like a week or so. But in the meantime, I actually had some spares to give out uh, 1500 to buy the cards, and honestly, I've been having a lot of fun. But this deck is also a bit of a technical deck. Uh, I am big dumb sometimes and I don't really see the clear lines there are to see in this deck and it You know even if you play or even if you play no if you don't play the deck kind of Optimally or with like a good line in mind it will punish you and you know There's been a lot of other mistakes I've been doing uh, especially with a card like Hanzo which can miss the timing so it's been a lot of trial and error with the deck, but it's still a deck that works. It is a heck of a lot of fun. And honestly, I'm really happy to finally be able to play it. So we're going to go ahead and go over the card breakdown. The card breakdown. The card breakdown here. Uh, starting off with the Ninja Monsters, we'll have Triple Tabari the Sky Ninja. Uh, it cannot be destroyed by battle or card effect the turn it was special summoned or flip face up. Uh, you can only use each of the following effects of Tabari once per turn. Send the card, send this card from the hand to the graveyard, special summon a ninja monster from the hand in face up or face down defense position. During your opponent's main or battle phase, uh, quick effect, you can fusion summon one ninja monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or field as material. Now this is really really good. Uh, it's a great way to kick off your opening play with Tabari and Hanzo, which at minimum will either allow you to end on a Saizo with a set uh, Ninja 2 art card or a lot more depending on what your hand is. But Tabari is definitely one of those ninja monsters that we always want to see in our opening hands because it can work with so many other, other things in the deck. Next up, Triple Mitsu, the Insect Ninja. Uh, if you control a ninja or a face down defense position monster, special summon this card from your hand. When your opponent activates a monster effect, quick effect, you can target one face down defense position monster you control. Change it to face up defense position, and if you do, change this card to face down defense position. Then, if the targeted monster was a ninja monster except yourself, negate that monster's activated effect. You can only use each effect of Mitsu the Insect Ninja once per turn. Uh, the effect negation will come up every now and then. Most of the time you'll be flipping up something like a Tabari or a Geo uh, to kind of get their effects. But, uh, you know, the effect negation is a little bit slower because we need Mitsu out to be on the field. Uh, it's not something that can activate like a hand trap. But when that does happen, she's really good. It's a, again, a monster negate and potentially form of interruption depending on what we have face down. But the main quirk of Mitsu is her ability to special summon herself, allowing us to either go into Link 2 plays or Fusion Monster plays, depending on what else we have on the field. Triple Ninja Grandmaster Hanzo. Uh, when this card is normal summoned, add a Ninjutsu art card from your deck to your hand. When this card is flip or special summoned, you can add one Ninja Monster from your deck to your hand except himself. Hanzo is the gear that makes this machine of a deck work. Um, it is the heart and soul. You will be uh, using Hanzo a lot because Hanzo is not once per turn. Uh, his effects are as many times as you can get him out on the field, so it combos great with a lot of our cards here. The thing about Hanzo, though, it can miss the timing. So whenever you are bringing out Hanzo, make sure whatever you are using to bring out Hanzo is the first effect in the chain link, and not somewhere in or not somewhere afterwards, because he will miss the timing. And you do not want to miss the timing. You want to get as much value of his effect as you possibly can. 
Uh, Baku the Beast Ninja, our favorite Hanzo target. When it's added to your hand except by drawing it, you can special summon it. If this card is special summoned or flip face up, target a ninja or ninjutsu art card from your graveyard or face up spell a trap card zone except Baku. Return it to the hand. You can only use each effect of Baku once per turn. Clutch card. Uh, we play it at one because playing any more will brick you up. Absolutely sucks when you open it. Uh, open with Baku in your opening hand. And unfortunately, that is something that does tend to happen every now and then. I think I just have a lot of bad luck because I've been opening with Baku way more than I would like to. But when you do get the effect of Baku, you will be getting so much value of it. You'll essentially be getting back either... Uh, most of the time the Tabari that you discarded uh, to activate the effect to special out Hanzo because uh, by that point you probably have a good kind of line to go through and Baku will help you reach that line. Another one of Kagero, uh, if it's normal, special or flip face up, you can special summon one ninja monster from your hand or graveyard in face down defense position except your herself. Uh, just another extender. Uh, when your opponent activates a card or effect that targets exactly one ninja card or one face down defense position monster you control, while this card is in the graveyard, you can special summon this card in face down defense position, and if you do, uh, return that targeted card to the hand. Uh, very situational, can come up every now and then when they're doing something like an imperm or, you know, ghost ogre or, you know, things that specifically target. Uh, Kagero can serve as a form of save and you know if it's something like Hanzo or whatnot uh, when you're activating their effects and they're trying to negate it uh, Kagero can just uh, bounce Hanzo back special summon herself you still gain Hanzo's effect and finally our, and then uh, not finally but our other one of Geo the gravity ninja when it's normal or special summon or flip face up target up to two face up monsters on the field change them to face down defense position and if you do any of uh, any opponent's monsters that were flipped by this effect cannot change their battle positions. If a monster on the field is flipped face up while this monster is face up on the field, except during the damage step, target one card your opponent controls destroyed. You can only use each effect of Geo, the Gravity Ninja, once per turn. Phenomenal card, great at stopping strategies that like to Xe summon, or like to Link summon, or like to Synchro summon, as they really can't use their monsters face down when attempting to do any of those summons. Very good. Um, the one downside to Geo for both of its effects is that they do specifically target, so some cards that are untargetable, uh, such as a 5 material Pearly Noir, or X Pearly Noir, my apologies, not as good, but still Geo is going to be one of your main ones that you'll special summon out in order to disrupt your opponent during their turn. He is phenomenal. And finally our last one, did I already talk about Green Ninja? I don't think I did. Uh, Green Ninja. Uh, if it's special, uh, if a monster is special summoned to your field face up, except during the damage step, you can target one of them. Special summon this card from your hand. If you do, change that card to face down defense position. If this card is sent from hand or field to the graveyard, you can target one monster on the field, change it to face up attack position or face down defense position. You can only use each effect of Green Ninja once per turn. Again, it's a great way to kind of disrupt on your opponent's turn because. Uh, uh, Green Ninja in conjunction with Tabari's quick effect to fusion summon during your opponent's turn allows you to flip a monster face down and depending on what you go into uh, you can either gain another form of disruption or you can bring out your big guy Mizen and you know just uh, attempt to start setting up your your next turn during their turn. And then our monster hand traps uh, we only run six for monster hand traps triple maxi goes without saying if you're playing master duel and you're not playing maxi you're doing something wrong it's a evil that everyone plays because as long as it's legal why not and then triple ash blossom great counter to maxi great generic hand trap uh, good form of interruption on your opponent against your opponent she's really good I mean goes without saying all right on to our spells we'll go ahead and go over our generic spells Rhoda to search out Hanzo or Kigeru mainly Hanzo uh, cross out designator in case our opponent decides to play max C or ash blossom against us uh, one way to counteract them make sure their effects don't go off same with called by the grave again graveyard effects max C, ash blossom or even when your opponent has a monster in the graveyard they, they need to target specifically and then banish uh, called by the grave will be able to stop that 
prosperity uh, for consistency's sake, and then triple Book of Eclipse. Now, Book of Eclipse flips all monsters face down, then your opponent draws cards equal to the numbers they face up at the end phase, because monsters flipped down by this have to be flipped uh, back face up during the end phase. It's a really good card, uh, and it kind of comes down to this. My friend uh, Tony, who kind of showed me th this deck list, uh, I asked him, Book of Eclipse or Book of Moon, which one did... Uh, and he went with Book of Eclipse because it doesn't target, uh, unlike uh, Book of Moon, which does target, which again, some some decks just have monsters that are untargetable. So Book of Eclipse just hits those decks a little bit harder, and Book of Eclipse works in conjunction well with some of our, uh, with one of our trap cards in particular. So if you want to do, you know, Book of Moon over Book of Eclipse, not a bad option, especially in this deck. Uh, I'm trying to think here. Or if you want to do like a 3 2 2 3 Eclipse Moon, Moon Eclipse, you can. It's just that you want to condense the deck as much as possible here because a lot of cards and ninjas just don't really work that well uh, by themselves. So you don't want to have too much things that could potentially clog up your hand. Uh, like I know for myself, I was playing Triple Tactics for a little bit, and that card, I don't know what it did, but it just, well, I know what Triple Tactics does, but like, it just like made the deck, it, it's weird saying this, but it made it less consistent, because there's certain cards that can set this deck off, and there's certain ones that don't, and so I think like having more than 40 really puts this deck in a bind, because you really want to open certain cards more than others, so I would always adva advise try to keep it to 40. So if you want to cut out something like an Impermanent Ash and play like two, two Book of Moon, more than free to. Uh, this is this has been working for me, uh, but you're always free to kind of change this up into Moon. On to our Ninjutsu spell cards that we play. A ninjutsu Art Notebook, uh, once per turn, send a ninja monster from your hand to the graveyard. Set a Ninjutsu Art Spell Trap card directly from your deck except itself. Honestly, if you're trying to finish off an opponent or if you're really needing a certain card, and by certain card I mean uh, Ninjutsu Art Tool Iron Digger, Ninjutsu uh, Art Notebook, pretty good. Uh, Hidden Village of Ninjutsu Art, when a ninja or if a ninja monster is summoned to your field, target a ninja monster ex or a ninjutsu art card in your graveyard, add it to your hand, but for the rest of the t this turn you cannot activate cards or the effects of cards with that with the same name as the added card. If a ninja monster and ninjutsu card you control would be destroyed by, blah, 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 by battle or an opponent's card effect, you can banish one ninja monster from your graveyard instead. Uh, you can only use each effect once per turn. Uh, this is mainly just a way of getting recursion, adding monsters back. Uh, especially if you have a normal summon, uh, you can just normal summon one of the monsters you add back and continue to play that way. Uh, Ninjutsu Art Iron Digger, the equipped monster gains 500 and is treated as a ninja monster. That is key. You can only use each of the following effects once per turn. Banish a ninja monster from your graveyard, target a card on the field, destroyed. If this card is sent from field to the graveyard, you can target one of your banished ninja monsters. Add it to your hand or special, uh, special summon it in face down defense position. Uh, this enables us to uh, tribute off our opponent's monsters if we choose to equip this onto one of theirs. Uh, it uh, also enables Boral Sword to be an OTK, uh, which is one of our big win cons of this deck. And then uh, Triple Ninjutsu Art Notebook of Mystery. Mouthful uh, if your opponent controls a card, so it doesn't necessarily have to be a monster, so if they have all set. You can still activate this. Uh, set up to one ninja monster and up to one ninjutsu art spell or trap card. Accept ninjutsu art notebook of mystery. These cards come from the deck and or graveyard, but only one can come from each. Uh, if this card set on the field is sent to the graveyard, target a face up monster on the field. Change it to face down defense position. You can only use each effect of this card once per turn. Uh, really good at helping us set up monsters from deck if we have uh, ninjutsu art in the graveyard, also good at recurring this ninjutsu art, and much like uh, Art of Note, Art Notebook uh, allows us to set uh, Iron t Iron Digger to uh, get our OTKs going. Onto the traps, our only, our uh, the best, uh, or third best hand trap, uh, I would put the second best because you can, uh, you don't set off triple tax, 
triple tactic so it's imperm uh, just generic uh, effect negation column uh, potential spell trap card negation if you set it in the appropriate column uh, really good card uh, art of duplication activate by tributing a ninja monster special summon any number of ninja monsters from your deck in face up attack position or face down defense position with combined levels less than or equal to the level of the tributed monster uh, a lot of times you if your hand is like okay but you open hanzo uh, you can search this out if they don't ash blossom you and then during your opponent's turn standby face you can get out like mitsu double tabari or if you so choose to green ninja double tabari that way when you fusion summon you can uh, have a dis you can have double disruption or you can have uh effect negation uh, pretty good and then three ninja to art of dancing leaves uh, activate this card by targeting one ninja monster or one face down defense position monster on the field, which is why we play the books. Uh, Tributed, and if you do special summon one ninja monster from your deck, when this card leaves the field, send that monster to the graveyard. You can target one ninja to art continuous spell or trap card in your spell and trap card zone. Return it to the hand. You can only use one ninja to art of dancing leaves effect per turn and only once per turn. So basically, it has a way to recur itself to go back to, to the hand and then reuse it. Uh, a lot of times you'll be bringing out something like a Geo uh, for further disruption on your opponent's turn. So that's the main deck, 40 cards. Again, maybe one of the few things I might do is like potentially cut out an Ash and an Imperm, put in Double Book of Moon, but honestly, I like this. I like this ratio where it's at. Uh, on to the extra deck. Triple Yaguromaru, the Armor Ninja, two Ninja Monsters with different types. Must be either fusion summoned or special summoned from your extra deck by tributing the above cards. If it's special summoned or flip face up, banish one other ninja monster or ninja two art card from your hand, graveyard or face up on the field. Target one card on the field, banish it. You can only use this effect of uh, Yagu Romaru once per turn. Uh, in combination with Tabari, because uh, that's the thing about ninjas uh, being face down, and a lot of their cards that special summon them face down doesn't really matter because contact fuse as long as you have the materials doesn't matter if they're face up or face down and with a tabari just being able to quick effect do it during your opponent's turn you'll be having a lot of a lot of different ways you can disrupt your opponent uh Mizen, the battle ninja uh again two ninja monster monsters with different types must first either be fusion summoned or special summoned from your extra deck by tributing the above cards you control your ninja monsters can attack directly while you control face down defense position monster your opponent's monsters cannot target this card for attacks when your opponent activates a card or effect quick effect you can special summon one ninja monster from your deck and face up or face down defense position you can only use this effect of Mizen the battle ninja once per turn uh, he is our big one that enables otks and uh, future setups depending on when your opponent activates. Uh, Blade Armor Ninja, two level four warrior type monster, so Hanzo and Kageru. Uh, detached material from this card, target a ninja monster you control. It can make a second attack during each battle phase this turn. So if you uh, basically manage to bring out Boro Sword, equip it with Iron Digger, uh, bring out Blade Armor Ninja, have Mizen on the field, Boro Sword can make a lot of attacks uh, to end the game. Uh, Baguska, in case your hand isn't the greatest, uh, you have a way to stall out for a couple turns. One of the most annoying cards to face. Uh, Divine Arsenal Double A Zeus, in case you don't get the OTK with Blade Armor Ninja. Uh, you just have a uh, two material Zeus to go off. Uh, two Ninja Grandmaster Saizo. Um, again, if your hand isn't ideal into going to one of the bigger plays, Saizo plus dancing leaves is not too bad because then you have uh, interruptions during your opponent's turn a really good card and two ninja monsters so nothing to scoff at uh, cross sheep two monsters with different names so easily attainable in this deck uh, cross sheep uh, if a monster is special summon to a zone this card points to you you can apply the following effects uh, fusion special summon one level four lower monster from the graveyard so you bring on Mizen onto a zone this points to you uh, use cross sheep to bring out Hanzo. Hanzo effect to gain something else because again it's on once per turn. Lovely card. Uh, Dark the Charmer. Uh, two monsters including a dark monster. Again this is mainly if they try to Ibli lock us or if they have a really juicy dark monster we want a special summon to our field. Uh, Burl Sword Dragon. Uh, key card that helps enable OTKs. 
And then Appaloosa, Bow of the Goddess. Uh, one of the potential end boards you can have is Appaloosa, Mizen, and one of your spot trap cards face down. Really good. So yeah, that is the ninja deck. Like I said, it is something that is very very technical and requires a lot more for a lot more thinking uh, than some of the other decks I've played, so I haven't been the best with it, but I'm learning and it's a really fun deck. Uh, and that's the profile. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys off with a couple replays to showcase the deck's power and kind of uh, kind of what you can do with it. It's not the best showcase, I'll say that right now, but you know, really good, uh, really good interactions there. Anyway, I'll leave you guys off with that. Enjoy the video, uh, like, and all that fun schnass. All right, take care, guys.